Hey, fast fellas. Today's episode, we're going to actually be covering a few different bases. First things first, let's talk about our future planning. We're going to expand to five more cities in the west here. And what we're going to do as well is a nice little culture victory. So our goal here is to optimize our overall district planning. That way we can continue developing more and more of these trade routes. And then along with that, what we can do is as we're, uh, as we're setting up with the biosphere setup, we eventually get to a point where we can place down tons of builders specifically to build these farms, AKA solar farms, wind farms, geothermal plant here, and any other form of renewable power that we can in order to gain tourism. I have to make sure I get the Merchant Republic specifically because of the inherent effect, 15% production towards districts. Yes, 10% more gold in all cities with the governor, that is very nice, but having that additional district production is massive. That's going to do massive wonders, so to speak, for us in the long game. That's our goal with this setup. We develop plenty of commercial hubs, get more trade routes, and then develop other districts to make it better and better, more optimized. Our science tech tree here specifically is going to be focusing on the infrastructure side of this. So we need to eventually unlock the biosphere. First, let's get some basic infrastructure with the aqueducts. Then we're going to go all the way down to industrialization, really start developing our production. So that way, once we have that done, we can immediately start pumping out a ton of settlers and setting up our West strategy. Our first goal during this strategy is to early settle and forward settle far west and then start settling east as we get closer and closer. And then we'll see what cities are strategically going to be the best. In Nagoya, we have that completed. So the good thing is, is that we can see here that we're very close to being able to get the next specific merchant we're looking for. Getting a couple more envoys here could be very, very critical for our actual setup. Here's why. As we go into this stage of the mid game, we can take control of Zanzibar, giving us a little bit more yields, or we can actually put a couple more into Venice here, further boosting up our banks, and then eventually one of our shipyards, because of course we'll have a couple available. We'll have one on the east, and then we'll have one in the far west, and that'll be a nice little setup for us. I very much quite like the idea of getting a couple envoys specifically into Venice just so we can boost those banks up because we have quite a few banks that we're getting on into and the more banks that we have what we can do is we can actually really make good use so I'm actually going to pick that up naturally I'm not going to spend any gold towards that that would be wasteful awesome so we just bought a first settler here immediately going to start making our way over there that'll be critical for us that we get that going this city has seven population now, so we have some options that we can work with. Let's go ahead and bring that freighter specifically to Takamatsu. Let's get that city up and running a little bit faster. I do want to get started on doing some chops in a couple turns because in next turn we are going to be getting the Merchant Republic. And that is going to level up our overall infrastructure massively. The day we stop exploring. All right, here we go. Merchant Republic, here we go, get a nice little bit of error score in the process of doing this. Then what we're going to do is we are going to first place urban planning up top as a guaranteed dedicated economic policy card. And then we're going to take a look and see where we want to do some adjustments. We can increase our gold return by a nice little bit here, but I think a nice option as an alternative would actually be this one right here. This would help our gold output a good bit and also provide us a good bit of tempo towards the things that we're looking for. So let's actually do that. And then for our diplomatic card, I would say a really good one for gold could be this one right here. So let's go ahead and pop into that one. As long as we get there in a good time and we start developing another city, it'll also give us tempo in a place where we know the AI won't be able to settle there as easily. And then once we develop more cities, we'll have loyalty pressure on them. So if they try to forward settle on us, we could potentially get some free cities. Excellent. So we're boosting up some nice yields here. This will help us getting more faith here will definitely help us with the great people. And then also more importantly, getting culture and tourism maximized will really help us so that we can start developing some tourism pressure. All right. So we're getting some very nice gold apple right here. <laughs> Take a look at this. Already up to 260 gold per turn i would say that is pretty pretty good the city is now at four population and is very much in a good position 
to continue growing quite quickly. I think focusing on a library might be more beneficial, so let's get that going first, specifically because I want to wait one more turn until we can get ourselves the builder cards and then start buying some builders around the infrastructure that we need. Now we're at the point where investing in some builders will be key. So let's buy a builder here. Let's buy a builder there and then next turn buy another one. Builder here. Builder here. Those will all be five charge builders. So of course that's going to be very good. We will very much set one up here so that way we can get these mines up and running. Those mines will give us a nice, very, very nice boost to our actual production yield. So we can very much go for that. The city eventually will become a desert production and food growth powerhouse. So this is going to be very nice. And I would say a builder here. And one more builder for the road. That way we can have a builder go into the west here help develop this area immediately, give us a nice boost to tempo, allow us to start getting things upgraded and built. Like for example, getting a plantation here so we can go ahead and get our gold a little bit more amplified in this city. And then eventually developing this, chopping that and then developing that would be very critical. And then going from there, have ourselves a nice great person to work with. So we will go here and then we will make the quick check here and have a look towards Zanzibar because getting that one could be very, very useful. So let's go to Zanzibar, collect the amenities from that, and that'll also boost us in the long term. All right, so in Takamatsu, now, now we can go ahead and get started with that commercial hub. It's gonna be quite nice to have another one and continue getting more and more of our trade routes available. And remember, our goal here is to continue expanding our gold infrastructure so much that we can just simply outright, like I just did a little while ago, buy settlers. And remember, they're not at great cost. If you think about how long it takes in turns, let's say that's going to take 13 turns. In the period of four to five turns, about four and a half to five technically, we'll be able to buy one. So think of it that way. We're actually able to seriously consider buying settlers en masse. Settle all these cities very much with heavy tempo. And then immediately start developing them as fast as we possibly can. Getting our late game biosphere set up. Getting some nice renewable resources here in the eastern part. Setting up some nice district planning here as well. And just having some overall very optimized late game structure. Awesome. So we do have access to coal and it actually happens to be placed in a beautiful position for us. So this is huge. What that does right there is that's gonna give us tempo to start collecting a good amount of coal. We can use a little bit. We're gonna use a little bit for a singular coal plant here in the center, and that'll be a good setup for us. That'll be a good setup for us. That's gonna give us a nice boost to our overall production means and just make things much more efficient. That's way we can start looking for specific upgrades that we'll need. And we can eventually develop a nice coal power plant here, and that'll actually be how we use that coal to get power to a lot of these other cities, further developing our setup and eventually setting up so that way we can get some very, very good, very, very good gold output with those upgraded banks and particularly the stock exchanges, which are the ones that we need the power for. All right, so <laughs> our trade routes are going to be insane. Check this out. Trade routes to your own cities gain 0.5 gold for each specialty district at the destination. Gain one envoy. Boom. Extra 12 gold per turn. As a permanent increase to our gold supply. That is huge. I'm going to go here. Because we have another envoy here, we have more options that we could work off of. So I'm very much happy for that. We can eventually start investing a bit more into these other ones. So I would say that's a nice one. This isn't really going to benefit us, so there's no need for us to have Suzum T of that. I would say we could hold on to it maybe for Hatusa is not a bad one. If we're looking for more strategics, that'll be a good late game one to consider. Zanzibar is, of course, our main target, so we are holding on to these envoys. 
we are developing a nice amount of gold so i think it is time for us to go ahead and buy another settler and get that settler immediately sent over well that sucks thanks indonesia thanks for doing that awesome i had to take a second to absorb what just happened and i just realized as i'm getting ready to bring it over boom there's a city in the way huh how wonderful well that plan just got scrapped i'm gonna leave those tiles there because eventually i'm gonna declare war get rid of that city and then we could work on that this is a loss for now but we could we could work around this not cool not cool well this can't actually work i'll have to settle a city here and see if i can reach any trade routes to this area as far over here as possible and we can go from there maybe i can get a trade route to takamatsu that'll actually give us a nice little satellite city build put another trade route down here another trade route down here and start developing trade routes to these regions let's immediately do this that's going to give us a huge boost to our population all right so that's going to give us a massive boost to our population we'll go into that keep us food positive so that way we go into those tiles and then immediately get another population go into that that'll give us the nice balanced setup here so we can start developing our infrastructure we'll develop a nice little commercial hub here and that's going to be huge for us interesting this city is going into rebellion that's actually not bad that could go in our favor actually sendai can go here that is excellent all the way to tokyo that'll actually start optimizing our trade routes here and also give us much faster growth potential because this city will start to grow faster opening up expansion to new borders which will be important what we also consider is let's bring reina over to sendai let's upgrade our culture output a little bit more We want to develop that a little bit more make that more competitive we'll pick that up that's going to be 15 turns so that's not too bad and then what we'll do afterwards is we'll consider other options asset de contestation that'll be something we actually go ahead and get the basis of it completed but we can eventually actually go for first we do the theater square because that is of course a major priority right now you know It'll work for me. There we go. And now that we just got that boosted, because as we can see here, we just immediately theme that, thus boosting the outputs here. So when you theme things, you're going to see in the bottom there, Art Museum is now themed plus 100% culture and tourism. So that's huge for us. That'll make some very nice benefits for us in the long term. We have a promotion available, I think. An idea here is Liang can go for zoning commissioner. It's going to be a very strong one. I'm actually going to go ahead and buy that tile simply because a plus five campus here is just too good. It's just too high a value there and we could do a lot with plus five. So I'd rather go ahead and just build that. There's way too much of a benefit to having that to not build that. Okay, so with building that, will actually be in an even better position. Right now, we are already up to 370 gold per turn at turn 184. That's pretty good. Unfortunately, Indonesia decided to completely murder our entire setup here. So that, that setup is going to be pretty brutal to go for in the long term. We've got ancient walls already. So what we'll have to do is really set up the next few cities here. All right, so next episode. By the end of next episode, we're going to actually engage in a nice little timing attack here going to get rid of that city, place a couple cities here. We're going to develop that city here. So we're going to keep saving up our gold now. And actually, this is the perfect time for us to buy another settler and bring that settler all the way over here because we want to start really adding loyalty pressure. And the more loyalty pressure we add to this area, if she tries to forward settle another area, we can actually eventually convert that city and if it happens to be placed in a good spot like over in this area here 
then we can actually immediately just get rid of it. That way we can actually uh, use that. So small things for us to work on for next episode. That being said, I've also got a video in the top left part of the screen. Go ahead and check that one out. Let me know your thoughts in the comment section below. Thank you so much for watching and thank you all for your support. Speed Demon out.